He reduced the size. One of the reasons he was cutting taxes was to shrink the size of the federal government all the way down to about where it was when John Diefenbaker was prime minister, actually, in terms of fiscal footprint. I think the federation is more at peace uh, than at any time uh, in quite a while. And he achieved that by simply getting out of the province's hair, letting them do the things that provinces do, and leaving Ottawa to do the things that Ottawa does. But it's also more I ideologically divided. Uh, between people who identify as progressives and people mm -hmm. who identify as conservatives. The middle is a more fragile space uh, than it was before he became prime minister. Yeah, I, as a guy who just moved here from Newfoundland, the, that province certainly was not at peace with Stephen Harper <laughs> during his yeah. time in politics. But Susan, when you look at Stephen Harper's time as prime minister, is, is there a singular moment that encapsulates his, his, his period as the top minister in the land? Oh, there's so many. The barbaric practices tip line. It was kind of a nadir, but it was a, it was a, overall my sense of him, and I've tried for fond nostalgia this week. I just can't muster it. Um, I think it's, here's your hat, what's your hurry? I, I do think that it's a huge relief that he's gone. I think his influence on the body politic in many, many ways was largely negative. Um, I think he was all about taking things away from people, taking away services, programs, uh, protections for the environment and other things. Um, he was uh, ruthless uh, with his enemies. He seemed to you methodically go about making enemies with almost every uh, cadre in the country. Um, it was in the end, it was almost him against Canada. Um, he didn't make Canadians feel good about themselves, I don't think, and uh, I don't think his departure is lamented very widely. That is uh, quite the indictment there, John, from, <laughs> from Susan. Susan and I have been disagreeing for about 30 <laughs> <Yeah>. years now. <laughs> Well, you, you know, Harper is definitely, he's a polarizing political figure. I think that that's fair to say. But he was a substantial one, John, and his departure from the leadership of the Conservative Party, there's a real void there. Well, the, there is this leadership race underway. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether any of the old guns do uh, come back, like Peter McKay. We know Jason Kenney is, is leaving and, and going after the, the mm -hmm. uh, provincial Conservative leadership in Alberta. But the other side of the coin is, and I don't want to look like I'm an apologist for Harper, I think anyone who read the, reads the biography will, will know that I'm not, um, but the Conservative Party is more united in defeat than at any time in its history. Uh, I was talking about this uh, in an earlier show, that um, if you look back to the wars between Dalton Camp and John Diefenbaker, between Brian Mulroney and Joe Clark, between the Progressive Conservatives and the Reform, between the uh, Canadian Alliance and the Rebel Alliance, whenever the Conservatives lost an election, they split into different factions. This is the first time the Conservatives lost an election and remain united. And I think that, in fact, is one of Stephen Harper's greatest achievements. He created and bequeathed a united Conservative movement. Right, and there was a school of thought, Susan, even going into the election, that knowing that he may lose this, he was the right guy to take him into defeat because he could minimize maybe the size of that defeat because they do have a pretty sizable caucus right now as an opposition and their fundraising is still pretty good. They're even beating the government some, some months. I think the reason he um, ended up unifying conservatives is because he essentially crushed dissent. He, he just put his heel down on anybody who disagreed, uh, within or without the conservative movement, I might add. And I, just, I think he leaves um, a very kind of nervous, apprehensive, and unenthusiastic cadre behind him. Um, I don't think there's been any excitement uh, surrounding the race. I think the most obvious candidate and perhaps the best candidate to replace him, Ronna Ambrose, has taken herself out of the running. Um, there's a lot of people now looking at Peter McKay and, and my theory also I'm about, not convinced McKay is going to get in. I'm not either, except uh, depends on what the polls say. I don't think he's mm -hmm. lost his appetite, uh, David, but he'd have to be convinced that he had a chance of winning. So a lot depends on how Trudeau does and, and what other uh, candidates might emerge. But I wouldn't rule him out. And here's my other theory. I'll just, I won't, you know. Go ahead. It is that the Progressive Conservative Party is not really dead, but it's been slumbering for all these years. And there still is a progressive conservative element, which I thought might reemerge as a reformed Green Party, but it may, it may yet rise from the ashes of, of Harper conservatives.